Warning, the following podcast contains coarse language and spoilers for the film and the title of the podcast. Now playing movie reviews in 20 cues. Hello, good people, and welcome to Movie Reviews in 20 Cues, the show where we review a movie by asking 20 weird and wonderful questions about it. I am your host, not Sam, as you can probably tell by my much nicer voice. This is everybody's favourite, Liz. Sam is currently sitting with his head in a bucket, I believe. Yeah, he's really not well, um, so I am just taking over the hosting duties, but luckily I have one of the podcasting world's absolute experts in with me, so I think I'm going to be fine. That wonderful expert that I'm talking about is none other than the spectacular M from Verbal Diorama. How are you doing, M? Hi. Hi, Liz. Hi. I'm a podcasting expert. Are you sure you didn't want someone else and you've just like contacted me by accident? I mean, Cause... Sam lined this up. So like, I just thought it'd be nice to introduce you in a nice way as opposed to the horrible yeah. things Sam says about us on a routine basis. Well, you know, the ladies are taking over movie reviews and 20 cues, and it's really wonderful. Uh, we should have mm-hmm. more women hosting this podcast every week, uh, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. So, less, uh, less Sam. Yeah. 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 He is the weakest link here. He is weak. This is not even the first time we, we've tried to record this. No. <laughs> no, we tried to record it last weekend as well, and he was, in inverted commas, sick. Mm, sick. I, to be honest, mm. I just think that he's got something against me. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really taking this personally. Yeah, it's um, absolutely that. It's yeah, hundred like, percent. He said yeah. specifically, "Don't tell him," but I'm pretending to be sick just to get out of talking to her. He, yeah, he specifically yeah, said that. I, know, I totally didn't make that up um, at all. Yeah, but yeah, it's so okay hard. because I'm here with you, Liz. And yeah. to be honest, I only Better. wanted to be here with you anyway. I didn't want Sam. Sam fuck off, and he has. Yeah. And now I'm here with you, and it's awesome. Perfect. Excellent. So with that, let's get into the podcast, shall we? We're here uh, to review the movie in the title of the podcast, which is Scott Pilgrim vs. the World uh, from 2010. I believe this was your choice of a movie, was it, him? was, yeah. It really Excellent. was, and I'm really excited about this one. Would you like to tell us what the plot of this movie is? Because I hate coming up with the plot. Sure. Well, I mean, it's it's not really rocket science. So uh, Scott Pilgrim is like a bit of a loser and a bit of a nerd and a bit annoying, let's be honest. And he's dating a high school girl, which is a bit suspect, but I'm sure we're going to come to that. And uh, he's at a party and he sees like in the corner this beautiful girl with bright pink hair. And he's like, oh, my God, I must know that girl. And um, yeah, he basically chases her and stalks her for a bit because you know that's what guys do and then she agrees to go out with him and he finds out that she's got seven evil exes and that he must defeat each of her seven evil exes in order to win her heart that is a (laughs) perfect perfect summary i couldn't have done a bit of myself so this uh movie is rated pretty highly across the board we've got 7.5 out of 10 on imdb Uh, 82% on Rotten Tomatoes, 69% on Metacritic, and it's got a pretty massively famous cast. Well, I definitely recognised a lot of names as they were coming up in the initial credits. We've got um, Michael Cera as Scott Pilgrim, Mary Elizabeth Winstead as Ramona Flowers, Brie Larson as M.V. Adams, uh, Chris Evans as Lucas Lee, Kieran Culkin as Wallace Wells, Aubrey Plaza as Julie Powers, Alan Wong as Knives Chow, Brandon Ruth as Todd Ingram, Alison Pell as Kim Pine, Jasha Swartzman as Gideon Gordon, uh, Anna Kendrick as Stacey Pilgrim, and Mae Whitman as Roxy Richter. I'm sure I said at least three of those names wrong. I don't give a shit. I'm rolling with it. It is what it is. Cool. Just do it. Yeah. It's, it's, we don't have Sam is. here. So he's, he's not here to go, actually, Liz, I think you're fine. So don't worry. It's cool. I know. It's great. He's going to be listening to something like, oh. Oh, God. Oh, she's the worst. And that's great. That's what I want to do. So uh, I'm really pleased that I'm already doing that so early. So I think now we can might as well get into our questions. Why don't you start us off with our favorite first kicker, the compliment sandwich, where we give one thing good, one thing bad, and one thing good about this movie. If you really love it, you could be doing one thing good, one thing great, and one thing good for a hyperbole sandwich. If you didn't like it, which I'm guessing isn't the case, you would do one thing bad, one thing good, and one thing bad. So take it away. Okay. Well, I will start this off by saying I've already used my 
incredibly large hyperbole sandwich on the movie that shall not be named because you hate it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, let's wait and see how we go with this movie, shall we? (laughs) Uh Oh, on a by note, every single time I hear you on someone else's podcast, like I heard you on uh, We Watched a Thing with Billy, you always bring up the money. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. oh my God, like it's still in her brain. I swear to God, you secretly love that movie. And that's why you keep bringing it up. I purposefully do that just because I know you're listening. And I just want you to know <laughs> that I'm thinking of you and judging your I life know, choices. I know, it's so yeah. sweet. I know. Well, I don't yeah. care. Most people do judge my life choices. So, <laughs> right. So, I mean, it's really no surprise that I am going to give this a compliment sandwich because I think this movie is super fun. So, my first good thing about this movie is, I mean, I think it's in the pantheon of video game movies. There's not really very many good ones. You can kind of say, well, Sonic the Hedgehog is okay. The new Mortal Kombat was okay. But overall, video game movies are normally a bit shit. And this technically isn't a video game movie, but it feels like a video game movie because it has all these video game references in it. And therefore, I kind of take it as a great video game movie because it just feels like how a video game movie should feel. But not only that, it's also a great comic book movie as well because it is based on a comic book. So it's kind of a bit of both and it works as both really well. So that's my first good thing. My bad thing is the Scott and Knives relationship. It feels really super creepy. And I know they don't kind of go so far. I think they maybe like have a peck on the mouth once and they hold hands once and They make it clear that it's not a physical thing because she's 17. But it still feels weird. You know, he's hanging out outside her school. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's still, it's creepy. It's really creepy. I'm not too keen on that, but I I, I appreciate the fact that they try not to make it too physical. And I mean, she's still awesome. I love Nige Chow. I think she's a great character. And yeah, Ellen Wong is awesome. And I guess that kind of moves on to my... The final good thing is the cast in this movie is phenomenal. You've listed all of them. They are all incredible actors. They've gone on to do amazing things um, with other projects. And they kind of all came on this movie at the same time when they were all relatively new. And they've all just exploded. They're all amazing in this movie. So I really do love this movie. But I have a funny feeling, Liz, that you're going to deflate my... Scott Pilgrim versus the world balloon. (laughs) Well, before I whip out my trusty pin, I would like to know what you would rate it out of 10,000 epic drum solos. Okay. So I'm going to rate this movie on purpose. 7,777 out of 10,000 epic drum solos. All right. I think we can roll with that. I was a little bit concerned you were going to rate it like 77,000 and I was just not going to be able to deal with that. Um, But 7777, I can can roll with that. So let me roll right into my shit sandwich. (laughs) I'm sorry, but I can't help it. I didn't like this film. Shocker. But uh, let me tell you a couple of the reasons why. Uh, The first was the dialogue was terrible. Oh my God, there were so many lines that were just really bad. Really felt like they thought they were being really clever, but then they weren't. Or, you know, they were just trying to play on something and you thought, "Mm, no, you didn't really hit it there. I just, too many really ridiculous things that I just didn't like. Ah, Sorry. One thing I did like was some of the scene transitions. They did some really cool little arty things in this movie some stuff that looked really good and some of the scene transitions particularly I thought were really impressive in the way they did them very smoothly sort of went from one scene to another in a way I don't know but Billy could probably tell us all the specific details um, from we watched a thing because he's a videographer person but um, I can't tell you what they mean so if you want to know what I'm talking about you'll have to watch it and finally well I'll agree with you there's some really amazing actors in this film I feel like Michael Cera made a bad movie even worse He didn't look like he could fight his way out of a wet paper bag. And he just made the creepiness of Scott Pilgrim, like, even creepier. I just didn't like him in this film at all. And I just struggled. And I've got a few other things to that I'll be talking about, but we can get to those in other questions. 
So I'm really sorry to yet again shit on your dreams, Em. I really am. One of these days we're going to find a film that we both love. But <laughs> here we are. Um, so I'm going to give it, just to you know, be a bit poetic alongside yours, I'm going to give it three, 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 three drum solos. In its defence, it was better than Mortal Kombat. I will agree it is not the worst video game movie by far. So um, <laughs> that's something. That's, that's, that's something. Your opinion <laughs> is your opinion. Like, that's just I mean, your opinion, it's, it's man. It's a shit opinion. <laughs> it's a shit opinion, but it's your opinion. And I respect you for yet another really crappy opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, though. You know, we're going head to head, battle of the babes. One loves it, one hates it. Here it is. Let's just move on from there and uh, do our best not to come to actual fisticuffs as we continue <laughs> to review this movie. So would you like to hit me with question number two? I would love to hit you, but I will also Rude. hit you with question number two. <laughs> so question number two is, what was the biggest dick move in the movie? Yeah, you've already mentioned it. It was uh, Scott Pilgrim dating a high schooler. Um, and it was because, especially because he was such an awkward weirdo, like he did it because he got dumped by his girlfriend and it hurt his feelings. And he was like, I can't handle a real woman. So then he had to go out with like a 17 year old that would hang on his every word. And I just thought that was just totally creepy. Oh, my God. I just really struggled with that the whole way. Exactly as you said, I get that they were trying to show that it wasn't physical, but they had him hanging outside of school. There was a couple of things where he sort of like talked down to her or like tried to groom her, like told her what music to like and that kind of stuff. And there were just a whole bunch of red flags there. And that wasn't made any better by the way he then reacted to Ramona Flowers. So, yeah, I just think... The whole high schooler thing, Ugh, just didn't like it. I mean, really, you could say the biggest dig move in the entire movie is Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> like, just that one guy. <laughs> and he's I, like some, he is like the title guy. <laughs> yeah, I kind of wanted to put everything that Michael Cera did, but then oh, I probably can't do that. Like, that's probably a bit much. So I tried to pin it down. But yeah, Scott Pilgrim, <laughs> generally speaking, fairly terrible. Yeah. 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 Well... Uh, my answer to the question is actually also includes Scott Pilgrim, but my biggest dig move is actually the fact that he slut shames Ramona yes. because she has a dating history. Oh, I was and waiting he's like, for that. Oh, you know, well, um, how many other exes have you got? You know, how many other people have I got to fight to win your affection? So I'm like, dude, fuck off. Like, first of all, most of these exes are just like high school crushes. But even if they aren't high school crushes, like it's still, who cares what someone's dating history is? Like people will have a dating history if you go out with them. You're never going to meet every single person who's going to be like a virgin who's never dated anyone. So, right, but of course, unless you go for a high schooler. I really feel like he had serious incel vibes, frankly, because it tied into that whole, you know, you want the virgin whore, or you want the sexy girl, but you kind of had actual sex with anyone. And just showing his own um, insecurities there with, um, you know, obviously he has not had such a successful dating life. So, of course, he has to shame the beautiful, confident woman. I did have a secondary dick move as well, which was when Todd punches the highlights out of Knives' hair. Because which it's like... such a weird concept. Well, it is. But also, like, all she did was say something and he gets up and punches her. Like, I mean, I know he's supposed to be an evil ex and he's supposed to be a dick. Mm. But that yep. that was just, I thought that was a bit too far. I but mostly found, my biggest dick move is Scott. I actually found the violence against the woman by the men, there were a couple, I felt overly violent. Like, oh, like I don't know, there was just something about it. Maybe it's just because, you know, you're not used to seeing dudes punch women or whatever, but there was just something about it that made me uncomfortable. I felt like they overplayed it or something. And that one, absolutely, that was one of the ones that really flagged up to me as well. So, yeah, super awesome dicks in this movie. You know how we love talking about dicks on our podcast, Tim. So I'm glad that we got that out of the way early. Maybe that's why Sam's sick. Maybe it's because, you know, you tell him to eat a dick. Yeah. Maybe he just has eaten too many dicks. Maybe he ate a whole sack of dicks. I'm not ruling it out. So anyway, <laughs> um, moving on. Uh, question three is what quote from this film would be the worst to hear immediately after having sex? I mean, there are so many. But my favorite is like a really throwaway line that Scott says at the party, which is, I have to go pee due to boredom. Yeah, that's not good. I mean, A, you should have to go pee after sex anyway to avoid a UTI. Yes. That's a very important thing that everyone should know. Very if you important. don't know that, 
now you do, make sure you do it. And secondly, yeah, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> I'd, I'd like to think that they'd had a good time, you know, that, that's kind of the goal. I'm going with presumably you just saw some guy's junk and I apologise for that because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure who the person is that's in the room and, uh, you know, apologising for the other dude's junk that I've just seen, but, you know, why are they apologising? How bad was the dude's junk? It suggests that the sex I just had was not very good. So, yeah, I'm guessing that's probably not going to be good. <laughs> um, all right. So what do we got for question four? So question four, what was the most insane leap of logic in this film? Yeah, that any woman would agree to go out with Scott Pilgrim, especially in the way yes. that he orchestrated it. I was like, she's not going to say yes to that. And then she said yes to it. And I was like, I'm sorry, no woman in her right mind is going to say yes to a guy that has creepily stalked her through her work, got her to turn up at his door and then refused to sign the package so she can go about her work day until she agrees to go out with him. I'd be like, cool, I'm going to just call my employer now and get you uh, banned from ever ordering from my this company ever again. And also I'm going to get a protection order because you are freaking psycho. Yes. So basically... Exactly the same answer. Me and you, Liz, were on the same mm -hmm. wavelength because the most insane leap of logic is that Scott Pilgrim would stand a chance with Ramona Flowers, Knives Child, or Envy Adams. Why would those beautiful, intelligent, talented women want to go out with that douchebag? Yeah, like, so when I, when I actually um, saw this bit, that's where I went, this movie must have been written by some absolute desperate loser, like some some absolute incel who cannot get laid and it's like, this is the dream where like, I'm a total weedy loser and yet I've got all these beautiful women just being like, yeah, I'll go out with you. And then I went back and it's like some movie director that wrote it, the, the guy that directed it, God, I'm hopeless. Do you know who it was? I should have actually had yeah, so it, Yeah, it's, it's Edgar Wright, but it's based right. on the, the comic book of the same name. Yeah, that's right. And who writes the comic book? I'm going to look it up. Brian Lee O'Malley. Brian so Lee O'Malley. look up who Brian yes, Lee O'Malley is. I mean, he's not that bad looking. It is kind of about looks. Sorry, Sam. But it's also not just about looks, Liz. Let's be honest. No, absolutely You can have not. a good looking incel. Well, he's a musician I as think. well. Like, so he's, he's a good singer and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, really? I don't have a problem with the guy. It's you've got a problem with the guy. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, it just came across so ridiculous. Really, yeah, just did my head in. I just thought it was absolutely stupid. But there we are. I could see with um, Ramona Flowers, by the end, you'd really got the vibe that she was actually not that confident and she was really self-conscious because of all her exes and all of that. So they tried to explain why she would have gone out with him. So it made a little bit more sense by the end, but I'm still not buying it. Like the fights, yeah, or, you know, the ridiculous, you know, um, leaps of um, physics and all of that, fine. The idea that that woman would go out with that man, nope. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Well, I want to come <laughs> back to this discussion. When we do a question in the future, I want to come back all right. to well, in that case, this discussion. Let's move on then to uh, number five, which is, in fact, a Patreon question. And it comes from our friend Dan at Netflix and Swill. Netflix and Swill is awesome. Dan is okay. Dan did make me watch 365 Days recently, so I haven't really forgiven him for that. But no, oh, I'm listen so sorry to his podcast for your anyway. loss. <laughs> oh my God. It was just so So bad. sorry and for the loss of your brain cells to having to watch that. Good Lord. If anyone's interested in how much I hated it, which was a lot, friends, a lot, and so did Sam, uh, you can actually listen to that podcast on Patreon and listen to us lose our brains over it. So I recommend that thoroughly. It's, it's a it's, very funny episode. I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's such a shit film. But uh, anyway, so thanks for that, Dan, uh, yeah. at Netflix and Swill. Um, he would like to know who was the true MVP of the film, and it can't be Scott Pilgrim, which is fine because he's not the MVP <laughs> of anything. If no. anyone ever came on like and answered this question, was like, Scott Pilgrim's the best character ever, I'd be like, dude, seriously? Like, are you okay? Um, so the true MVP of this film is Wallace Wells. Yep. Wallace Wells is the most awesome character. He actively tries to make Scott a better person, tries to make him less douchey, tries to make him more responsible, literally tells him the way of the world. And I mean, obviously, you know, secondarily to this, he is kind of like stealing Stacey's boyfriend at the same time, yep. which is really funny. <laughs> 
But I love Wallace Wells. I think Kieran Culkin is fantastic and I want Wallace Wells to be my best friend. Yeah, I... <laughs> please, I please want this to be my best friend. Good answer. Because, um, yeah, he just gave him good advice, solid advice, and he genuinely put up yeah. with him, which, frankly, I think is a master act in itself. Like, that's that's classy if you can do that. You, you're a better person than me. All right, so question number six is also a Patreon question, and it comes from Julio of the Contrarians podcast. The Contrarians podcast is one where... They take a really loved movie and they tell you why it's shit or a really shit movie and tell you why it should be loved. And then I think they do another podcast where they tell you what they actually think. But it's a good time and you should go and listen to it. So what would Julio like to know, please, Em? Well, hi, Julio. I'm actually going to be on The Contrarians um, in September and I'm really excited because I've been wanting to go on for ages. Um, So Julio would like to know, what's your most controversial opinion about this film? And I suspect, Liz, you've got a lot of controversial opinions. Well, I said that it should never have been made. And my boyfriend was like, that's not controversial. That's legit. And so my controversial opinion today is that there were too many fights and they were dumb. (laughs) (laughs) Your face. Oh, my God. I was like, oh, God, there's seven of these. And a couple of them were quite good and a couple of them were just not. And I especially got frustrated at the end because I was like, cool, he's fighting the big bad. This is fine. We've done this fight, good o. And then they had to do it again for level two. And then they had to do it again for level three. And I was like, oh my God, can we just finish the fighting, please? So sorry, but that's <laughs> how I feel. St- <laughs> fight scenes are never my thing end. anyway. I can never follow them. So no. I'm always like, oh, I hate this. I mean, I, I really love the fight scenes, but then, you know, I grew up playing like Street Fighter and Tekken, so I'm really a big fan of, of fighting video games and stuff. So for me, this, this movie is pretty perfect because all of the video game references, like, I get. But um, obviously at the end, you know, when like Nurga Scott turns up, they do turn that on its head because they don't have like a huge Scott versus Nega Scott fight. It's like, oh, you know, they just have a chat. And I actually really like that because it kind of subverted that a little bit. Yeah, that's really cute. And they don't. That was quite clever. I did think that was quite good. And I was also glad because I didn't have to watch another fight. (laughs) (laughs) So, my controversial opinion. So, this is what I actually wanted to come back to because my controversial opinion about this film is that it's actually quite a serious drama. Uh, And let me explain. (laughs) I believe that this is actually a story about the cycle of abuse in relationships. Because if you think of Ramona, she's obviously met these people, she's gone out with them, and they've either treated her badly or something's happened and she's moved she's moved on like naturally and they've like harbored this resentment towards her. And they've harbored it so much they've actually created a league of evil exes to get back at her. This is like cycle of abuse stuff because she's, and she's like constantly repeating it all the time. She's constantly going for these particular type of people who are bad for her. And it's also about the entitlement that people feel when they think they meet the perfect girl or boy kind of thing. And they're like, I have to be with this person. I have to stalk this person. I have to know this person. And I think it's actually quite smart at how it deals with relationships. And, and also if you look at the character of Gideon, he is like the ultimate evil ex. Because he's the guy that she can't help go back to. And obviously the whole, there's a chip in her neck kind of thing is is the way they explain it. But if you think of like a really toxic ex and how you, like some people will continually go back to their toxic ex. Absolutely. Because like, in my mind, like this movie is actually trying to say something about the cycle of abuse. But also, I really do think that that it's also trying to say that Scott is the next evil ex waiting to happen. Absolutely. Because yes. of the way he treats her. And I think that's a really good call. It's not like she is now broken free of the cycle. She's just moving on to get another really terrible person. So, um, <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's a really good call. And, like, you can see that through the way he treats knives. Like, there's just a whole bunch of yeah. really poor things going on. And, yes, he, in the end, he sort of apologises about him cheating on them both. But, I mean, it's pretty pathetic. I didn't really buy it that well. It wasn't. You know, he didn't seem that remorseful. It was more that he got caught. It was all just a bit shit. So, yeah. Sorry so, to know with the tone. <laughs> well, I, I think that actually moves us on quite nicely to the next question, number seven, which is what deep philosophical debate arose in you during this movie? I couldn't help but think that if I, I mean, 
obviously, I am completely single and available. If anyone's interested, hit me up. But uh, <laughs> if I met like this guy and he was like amazing and he was gorgeous and intelligent, all of those really cool things that I'm looking for, again, if you fit that bill, hit me up. But if he said to me, oh, by the way, you have to fight my evil exes, would I actually, would, th- would it be worth it? How how fit and, um you know, brilliant and intelligent and amazing would this guy have to be for me to say, okay, I'll fight your exes and like just have a scenario where I'm fighting all these other people for his love? I would think it I'd give it a go. Would it actually be worth it? Yeah, I think I'd give it a go. It, like you don't know till you try. Okay, so, so say for example, I mean, I used to fight. <laughs> Sounds weird. I used oh. to fight. I, I was a kickboxer for a long time. Um, oh, and get in. still am a kickboxer. But I know how difficult it is to actually fight someone. Like I've done like sparring. I've done like low level, not like, like league competitions or anything like that, but kickboxing school competitions I've done. I came third. I'm very proud. So when I watch a movie and it's got like a great choreographed fight scene, I'm just like in awe because I know how difficult it is to actually get up and fight someone. It's really, really fucking tough. So I'm thinking in my mind, let's be honest, Keanu Reeves, he comes to me and he's mm-hmm. like, I think you're amazing. I want to date you. And I'm like, well, okay. And then he's like, yeah, but you've got to fight my exes. Who are his exes? I think he's had a few. I don't know all of them off the top of my head. I know he's dating someone right now, um, unfortunately for me. But as much as I think Keanu is like the fittest guy, smart, and he's really kind, I'm kind of talking my way into it now because I'm like, yeah, actually, I probably would fight his exes. But the actual physicality of fighting someone, like it'll hurt. And (laughs) I'll be sore the next day. And what if I lose? And... You know, so I guess that's my deep philosophical debate is, would it actually be worth it? The good news is that it's a very unlikely scenario, so I think you're going to be okay. Yeah, and, and Keanu is never going to want to date me. Oh, God. No, that, I mean oh, the God fighting. Deal. I mean the fighting part. Yeah. Definitely not the Keanu okay. part. That's, that's totally likely. So anyway, before you uh, <clears throat> worry about that, um, my deep philosophical debate is one I've thought of in a few movies lately. Why do movies always have the characters declaring their love for each other within like less than a week? It just, I've seen it in like five movies lately and it just pisses me off. It's so unrealistic and it's totally unnecessary. Like, I just don't think he needed to be like, I love you, Ramona Flowers, at the end. Like, he could have just been like, you're worth it, Ramona Flowers. You know, that would have been enough. We didn't need him declaring his love for someone he didn't know at all. I so can we so kind of say from this that you and your quite new boyfriend have not like, you weren't like declaring your love for him after like five days? I have to say, I don't think I've ever done that because that's insane. And <laughs> like, he's okay. So I'd probably like to like not terrify him and make him run away immediately. Sure. So yeah. Goal, because in the real goal. world, <laughs> yeah. in, in the, the real world, world like, yeah. That does terrify someone. Be like, oh, my God, I'm so madly in love with you. Shit, fuck, I'm running away now. Bye. Well, it's just Um, so unbelievable because you don't know this person. How can you love someone you don't know? That's just stupid. And now I think you should move on before I get angry. Yes. And tell us about question eight, which is, in fact, also a Patreon question. And it is from Dave Baker of patreon.com forward slash your favorite where he does a whole bunch of cool content and you should definitely check it out. So what is his question, please, Em? Hi, Dave. So Dave's question is, what two characters would you want with you at a house party? I think I'm going to go with Kim and Julie because I feel like the three of us would just sit back, have some beers, hate on people, (laughs) essentially. (laughs) Sit there judging quietly in the background, just going, that guy's a tool. That guy's an idiot. Did you hear this great gossip that I heard? Blah, blah, blah. I think it'd be fun. Do you know what? I can actually see that happening. I really yeah, can. 100%. And, um, and my answer is 50% the same as your okay. answer. <laughs> Mine is Julie Powers and Stacey Pilgrim. 
Uh-huh, because yes. I feel like very much the same. Because I, I think Stacey is a bit more of an upbeat character and Julie is a bit more cynical. And then I can meet them in the middle and be like a bit of both. Because I did think of Kim, but I think Kim is obviously super cynical. And so I thought at, at a house party, I want someone who can like maybe have a bit of fun like Stacey, someone who's a bit cynical like Julie. Because, you know, then like you say, you can gossip, you can have fun. I just thought Stacey would be like a, a little bit more fun than Kim. But yeah, no, I get that. Stacey was my yeah, very close, identical. very close third. You know, if Kim was sick, I would absolutely invite uh, Stacey along instead. So I, I hear that's totally fine. Um, I mean, really, we should have invited uh, Stacey, as in Sam Stacey, here um, because Sam was sick, but we d- didn't think of that. So I but also she's pregnant, so yeah. she's probably, <laughs> she's probably um, a little bit just not really. Oh, she's probably right she's now, probably like a bit busy as well. Yeah, yeah. But okay. hi, Stacey, if you do listen to this, um, hi, Stacey. we love you very much. Um, all right, yeah. um, this gets us to question nine, which is from the Madman Nerdrovert. Uh, who would like to know when the best time was for a bathroom break? I really struggled with this question. Same, but probably like, for a different reason. <laughs> <laughs> probably for a different reason. Yeah, completely different reason. This movie is quite tight in the, it's it's like quite tightly paced and stuff like that. And there's a lot of information kind of in the background, a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of jokes. There's a lot of um, like on-screen gags and stuff like that. So the only place I could think of a decent bathroom break was the first date between Scott and Ramona because they're they're just kind of getting to know each other and the Matthew Patel fight comes after that and you don't want to go to the toilet when a fight is on because that's probably the most fun that this movie is for me. I have decided that I'd go with um, the fight with the Katanayagi twins because I found that particularly average for a fight. Like, it was just kind of like, okay, they're shooting some lights at each other, whatever. It didn't add anything extra. Like, you knew that fight was coming. You knew he was going to win it. There wasn't any specific information given out. And I didn't really like the music that they were playing at each other. So I was kind of like, eh, this is fine. That was probably my, like, second or third choice. But then I was like, no, it's a point, so you can't really go to the toilet during a fight and it's a cool looking fight as well so yeah agree to disagree but that's okay that's okay so question 10 what would the porn parody name be for this movie well you know we love these i've been told that my answer is lame i don't care i'm going with it mine is hot pilgrim versus the world and basically it's the same except instead of scott pilgrim we have an actual pilgrim but it's like a hot chick and she fucks everyone <laughs> instead of fighting them. Like a pilgrim, like in like the 1600s from America, you know, with like the hat. I, and I, know, I know what a pilgrim is, Liz. <laughs> so, just helping. I know it's shit. I don't care. What have you got? I've actually got a few because once I started with the porn parody names, I couldn't seem to stop. Amazing. So um, my first one was quite similar to yours, actually. It's just Scott Pilgrim fucks the world. Mm-hmm. Um, which is basically let Scott Pilgrim go around like fucking loads of people. And then I was like, actually, no, I didn't like that one. So I changed my mind and it is Scott Pilgrim versus the whores. And then I was like, no, that doesn't seem right either. And then this is the worst one. And I'm so sorry for this one. Scott Pilgrim takes Ramona's flower. Oh my God. That's amazing. That is the best one. I love it. (laughs) Scott, or even just like Scott Pilgrim versus Ramona's flower. Yeah, actually, yeah. that's better. And but like fighting like, to, who he has calls to fight to take a virginity. That would be amazing. Oh, I totally do. It's my lady garden down here. <laughs> so that's absolutely a flower. I don't know if anybody listening has recognized this already, but I am a massive prude. So I love that. And that sounds like my kind of porn. It just feels soft and delicate. And he could fight all the exes for the right to like take her flower. <laughs> I think that's the way to do yeah, it. Yeah, so so someone's gonna take her flower, but we just don't know which one it's gonna be. Could it be Scott? Could it be Lucas? Who knows? Yeah. He's gonna fight all all of the exes, and someone will take her flower at the end. I'm certain there are porn movies with less plot than that. So I I think we've run our okay, winner cool. here. Make the money. All right. So that actually gets us through to my set of questions. And actually, I'm going to ask uh, my second question first because it ties into that perfectly. And you can't just say make the porn movie that we just came up with. But my first question is, how would you try and make some sweet profits off the back of this movie? 
I'm such a dumbass. I think I misunderstood the question. Interesting. When you sent the question through and you put, how do you make some sweet profits? I took that literally. And I said you'd make vegan sweet gummies <laughs> shaped like Scott and Ramona in the evil exes. And that's how you make sweets. That's out, amazing. And then make profit. I think that's a translation issue between the New Zealand dialect and the British one. So that's amazing. And you've brought me a lot of joy. I reckon you could so, make money out of that. I, like, I love that you didn't even ask for clarification either. You were just like, <laughs> seems okay, weird, but fine. They just want to make profits of sweets. Well, that makes sense. So what sweets? Like, you know, could I do some chocolate? No, no, no. Let's do gummies, but let's make them vegan because, you know, vegan, please. But let's make them shaped like, like the characters and then you can sell them. I think it's genius. Do it. Mine was way more simple. I was just thinking if you sold a pack of T-shirts that was every one of his T-shirts from the movie, because he wore like a different T-shirt in every scene. So you just sell that whole pack, you know, as like a super pack of of T-shirts. I reckon people would totally like that. That's actually a much better answer. No, I liked yours. I like lollies. I'm so embarrassed. That's awesome. I think it's great. For once, I'm not the stupid sounding one on this podcast, which I usually am. So, oh, yeah, if you want stupid, then that's why you call me. So, yeah, we're we're, we're two kinds of special. So, um, anyway, uh, <laughs> my next question. So, question twelve: What nerd culture reference wasn't made but should have been? Because obviously, this movie is full of nerd culture references. I have obviously played a lot of video games in my life, and there's a load of references. There's like references to Zelda. There's references to fighting games um there's basically like standard references like where you get coins and you pick coins up as you go along like in mario and stuff like that Mm -hmm. um and the only one that i could really think of which wasn't made but should have been was a mortal combat flawless victory yes and then i was like well actually no because no victory was actually flawless in this movie but i don't care uh i would have still really loved like even at the end like when he and Ramona get together, like maybe they could have had a flawless victory or something like that. Like That's that would great. Be quite cool. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't think that matters though about it not being a flawless victory because actually I think you'll find if you watch Mortal Kombat, when they say that in the movie, it wasn't a flawless victory. So no, I know. they obviously don't give a shit. Sorry. You could at least have had the Mortal Kombat <laughs> scream, right? Clearly I'm fabulous at it. I won't do it on this, but you can hear it on the podcast, I think, where both Kahu and I had a go and it was really bad. So that's a bit of entertainment for you. Finally, my third question was, did you know that Brie Larson could sing? No. Me either. I was quite <laughs> impressed, actually. Yeah, I, I, I think she's great in this movie. I really love Envy Adams. And she obviously is really singing that song. And she's really great. And she looks amazing. I had that song as my ringtone for a while. That's how much I loved that song. Oh, wow. Um, it's a cool the Black song. Sheep song. So. Yeah. It is a really cool song. Yeah. No, I I thought she was great. And actually, that's a perfect segue because um, I can now get into Sam's questions. But before I get into Sam's questions, I'm going to read out what Sam sent me. He obviously didn't have a lot of energy to put into actually answering questions or anything because he sucks uh, and is sick and sucks. But he has advised that his score would have been 9,028 out of 10,000, which is holy shit. So you would have had support but now you don't, so too bad, so sad. And he said his controversial opinion is that Brie Larson sucked in this. Just because she sung one song well doesn't mean that she is great. (laughs) And I'm like, when I read that, I was like, okay, so actually I'm quite glad you're not on this podcast because obviously your opinions are terrible and you should just eat that whole fucking container ship of dicks. Look, can he really even have an opinion when he's like, you know, got his head in a bucket right now? He needs to just concentrate on vomiting. Yeah. And Leave Sam, the podcasting to the professionals and just vomit. Absolutely. Okay? And don't try and make us vomit with your shit opinions. And that is what I'm <laughs> saying. <laughs> That's that note. But on that note, um, I'm going to ask Sam's questions and we can both answer them. So Sam's first question is, how many of your exes do you think that he could battle his way through on standard difficulty? I was actually trying to remember all my exes and. I mean, I'll be honest, there's a few, so <laughs> but yep. don't but we we're, we're not we're not doing a Scott Pilgrim slut chain here. God I've no, had a lot in. of exes. Liz has probably had a lot of exes. One or two or three or four. It's well, it fine. Quite, like, that how flight. do you decide? It's like how good. 
how big are the, you know, are they like your sort of high school where I went out with a guy for two months and we held hands? Like, is that an ex? Well, see, I went to an all-girls high school and I'm straight. So I didn't have any high school romances or anything like that. So yeah. I didn't really like start dating until I had left high school and like gone to college and everything. So I'll count something that's like lasted two weeks or more. All right. <laughs> so on that note, okay. what is your number? On that note, crikey. I'm going to say my number is 25. And he can uh, beat ish? all of them? And um, well, the thing is, they were pretty wimpy. I don't think I went out with anyone who was like, you know, regular at the gym. Oh, actually, one guy, one guy was. Maybe you can't beat him. Okay. What about if you were holding a bucket of KFC? Well, first of all, the, if the vegan police were here right now and Sam was here, then <laughs> Sam would get taken by the vegan police. Oh, absolutely. Because the amount of chicken that Sam eats, like going to KFC, like, Hate to tell you, Sam, but chicken isn't vegan. So Absolutely the vegan not. police would totally take him. But if I was holding a bucket of KFC and Sam had to fight through like 25 of my exes, I mean, let's be honest, I think Sam would do that for a bucket of KFC. He'd do it for a bucket of KFC. I'm not sure he'd do it for either of us. God, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, so. I'm, I, I don't really like Sam's chances. I think he could probably take Simon. Simon's a bit more on the, you know, nerdy side. But uh, Matt, Spanner and Chris, yes, I dated a guy called Spanner. Um, they're all pretty physical. I just don't think Sam's, Sam's KO'd. That's the end of that. Sorry. Sorry, <laughs> bud. What, even for KFC? Look, frankly, if we're talking about right at this very moment, I'm pretty sure like my nine-year-old niece could take Sam. Um, let's move on to a second <laughs> question, which is, um, that a, he said a ton of his former favorite actresses are in this movie. I wonder why they're former. I don't really know. Um, I'm sure he would have told us, but thankfully we don't have to hear about that. He would like to know what the best acting performance that they've done is. And he's given me Anna Kendrick, Aubrey Plaza and Brie Larson. So former fave actresses. Mm. And then he's listed Brie Larson. And he just basically like said that Brie Larson was shit in this movie. So what is it, Sam? Do you like Brie Larson or don't you like Brie Larson? Yeah, Sam. Or is it just like this movie, Brie Larson? And I know he's not here to answer the question, but I know he's listening. So Sam, what is it? What is it? Do you like her or do you not like yes, her? Yes, Sam. You know, clarification, please. But I would say the best acting performances of those three, obviously, I can only choose stuff that I've seen. And I've admittedly not seen a great deal of their past stuff. But Anna Kendrick, I've put a simple favor because I loved that movie. I thought she was great in it. Aubrey Plaza, I've said the TV show Legion because, again, I thought she was amazing in that. And Brie Larson. I have to say Captain Marvel because Captain Marvel meant so much to me as a woman, seeing a female superhero on screen and what that meant. And the music in that movie meant so much to me. Um, so yeah, Captain Marvel uh, for Brie Larson. Nice. Um, curious as what yours are, Liz, to be honest. They're all different, which is pretty cool. I'm Not, su with... <laughs> not surprising. <laughs> well, it's probably true. I mean, I'm not disagreeing with you though. Uh, Captain Marvel was fantastic actually. And I, I love Brie Larson as well. So for Brie Larson, I'm going to say Room. I think she was just outstanding in that. If you haven't seen that, you absolutely should, although it is fairly harrowing. Yeah, I haven't so seen it, prepared. unfortunately. But it is, it's an excellent film and she's, she's pretty amazing in it. Aubrey Plaza, I've also chosen a TV show, but not that one. I've chosen Parks and Rec because I fucking love Parks and Rec and I love April and she's hilarious. And for Anna Kendrick, I'm going to say Up in the Air with uh, George Clooney. Um, even though my boyfriend said I should pick. Not pitch seen perfect. that one either. Do you know, I, I am such a fan of those Pitch Perfect movies, but I was like, I don't think I can pick Pitch Perfect. Not because as I think that acting, would like you know? Well, no, because yeah. I feel like I've got like very little credibility on this podcast just generally for my choices. <laughs> I feel like if I chose Pitch Perfect, like Sam would be like, your credibility is like minus and you're never coming back ever again. So. Oh, look, he lets me come back I, I do want to come back. So. He thinks everything I say is stupid. So I think we're fine. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. So his final question was, okay. uh, which one of the exes makes the least amount of sense for Ramona to have dated? To me, it's the Katanayagi twins because I have a question. Like, did she date? And I know this movie, the movie says it as well. Like, did she date them at the same time or one after the other? And which is worse? Like, if you're going to date like siblings or twins, obviously, I think maybe dating them at the same time is probably worse. Em, don't be a dick. No, no. But, 
if they all know about it and it's an True. ethically yeah. polygamous relationship, then hey, you do you, baby boo. You get your freak on. I'm fine. That's with true. It. Yeah. If if there's like consent all the way around, then that's cool. But then whether she dated them at the same time, one after the other, also, um, the characters, well, they don't say anything. And I was yeah. like, is that because maybe they don't speak English? But obviously the movie doesn't really tell us whether they speak English or not. No. I don't think so. But either way, I was like, they probably, if they don't speak English, then that probably makes the least amount of sense for her to have dated them. But they are good looking guys. So I'm like, well, you know, if they're fit, then maybe she was like, well, they're really attractive and there's two of them. So fuck yeah, I'm having a good time tonight. You know, I don't know. But that that was kind of the only thing I could come up with. No, I feel cool. I mean, I've gone with the first dude because I feel like they just didn't set it up that well. Like he was just totally a weirdo. And at that point she was still cool Ramona who hadn't been totally destroyed by that cycle of abuse you were talking about, right? Like she still probably had lots of self-confidence and was badass and, and didn't just settle for total douchebags. So I feel like she wouldn't have gone out with the weirdo emo dude, in my humble opinion. I really like Matthew Patel. And I think I like him specifically because he sends Scott an email beforehand. And I'm like, well, that's the polite thing to do. Like, if you're going to set up a fight with someone, just send them an email and say, you know, dear Scott, whatever your name is, I'm going to fight you just to let you know, kind regards. If you're going to fight someone, just do that. It's simple email etiquette, you know, like just it's it's meeting exactly. etiquette. It's, it's the classy thing. Just, you know, don't be a dick. That's basically what it comes down to. Exactly. All yeah. right. It's time for your questions, baby. What do you got? Yes. Yay. So my questions. So my first question is, which of Ramona's evil exes should have their own spin-off movie? The vegan dude, Todd, right? Cuz I want to see okay. I want to see what vegan prison is like. I'm I'm curious. Like do they use meat as a punishment? Wanna... Surely not. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that would uh Oh yeah, yeah that like, would be instead like of sending you to solitary like a Russian gulag or something like that. Yeah, instead of sending you to solitary, yeah. do they actually just send you to an abattoir? I don't know. Like, I mean, that is dark. Yeah. That is dark for vegans. Right? So um, I'm just, I feel like you could do something And it's quite interesting as well. Like, how do you get vegan superpowers? Like, and how long do you have to be vegan for to get those powers? I want to see like an origin story. He meets Ramona and then like he obviously turns vegan. But like, how long do you have to be vegan to get those powers? And like, what's the process? I think that's a great answer. Do you think it's directly tied to how much you tell people you're a vegan? Because vegans do love to tell people that they're vegans. So maybe like the more you spread the word, the more like you build your vegan power. Yeah. So, you know, when you sign up to something and you get like a referral link on an email and you have to pass that referral link, maybe veganism in this movie, this universe is the same thing. So you pass on your vegan referral link and if they turn vegan, then you get the extra power. So it's a pyramid scheme is what you're telling me. So like a pyramid payback vegan scheme. <laughs> nice. Yep, this <laughs> is, is I, want a, I want a whole movie about the pyramid vegan scheme. I would absolutely watch that, 100%. And Brandon Bruce pretty hot, even with fucking frosted tips. So, you know. Everyone in this movie is hot, apart from... Apart from the title Pilgrim. character, yeah. But literally everyone else in this movie is mega hot. Yep. So... Yeah. This is a hot movie. Good times. So my second question for you, Liz, is you have to date one of Scott or Ramona's exes, and you have to do this. You have to date them. Which one would you choose to date? It was a big decision because, obviously, they're all pretty terrible. And so I'm going to go with, because I am a straight female, I'm going to go with the skateboarding actor, dude. Lucas Lee. Yeah, I'm going with him because he's hot. He's probably quite rich. Yeah. And I could meet better movie stars to date after him. So, you know, you date him for a little bit, bang him, get him to buy you some nice stuff, and then get him to introduce you to Keanu Reeves. Problem solved. I'm a genius. I mean, that is a good answer. I thought I, so. I would argue that we don't really get to know his personality because he's just like a bit of a douchey Oh, actor. I don't care about But he's hot because he's Chris Evans. Yeah. I, so. Personality is not important. He's probably off like filming movies a bunch, so I don't even need to hang out with him very much. So obviously, let's just clarify. So when you're dating this particular person, you're literally like just using them as a fuck buddy. Is that what we're saying? I mean, if it's that guy, yeah, I guess. Like, <laughs> and um, what 
so, you know, when he brings his like stunt team in, are you like down for that as well? You know, like when he brings his stunt team to like fight Scott instead of him, like, are you into like, you know, the whole stunt team as well? Or is it just that one guy? Yeah. Maybe a couple of the ones that looked like him, but then there started to be a few that didn't actually look anything like him and were not very attractive. And no, so that's that's about where Fair. I go out. I'm very shallow, so don't know what to tell you. No, that, that's person. a cool answer. Look, I, look, no shame. No shame from me. Whatever you want to do with your life, love, you get on and do it. Fuck buddies, you know, taking on the whole group. I am down for that. And I'm, I support your decision. And to be honest, I'm a bit jealous because if that means it's going to get you closer to Keanu, then what the fuck am I doing with my life? Well, my final question is, Ooh. if you could get badass superpowers, but you'd have to live a completely vegan lifestyle, would you? Now, obviously, this question was mostly aimed at Sam, who's not fucking here to answer it because he's a dick. Yeah, he is a but, dick. Um, but I've got Liz, an what is your answer anyway? Okay, cool. I reckon it's probably the same, to be honest, because my answer is no. Maybe vegetarian. I might consider it if I, um, you know, if I could get superpowers for being vegetarian. But I'm not giving up eggs or dairy because cheese and ice cream and um, cake and whatnot. Um, and frankly, like I'm a fairly picky eater, so I'd probably end up dying from malnutrition if I went vegan. I just like I'd have the superpowers, but I wouldn't even have the energy to like lift my arms to shoot the beams out of my hands or whatever. So I don't think it's a good idea. It'd be literally the worst vegan superhero ever. Yeah. They'd be like, Liz, we need to go. We need to use superpowers. We need to save like some cat from a tree. And you'd be like, I just don't feel too good today, guys. They'd be like, like, don't worry, just have a carrot. It'll bump you. And I'm like, oh, Karen, I don't want to eat a carrot. I want cake. Yeah, I'd be, <laughs> I'd be shit. I'd give up in like three days. It'd be terrible. As a vegetarian, I can tell you that there is no such thing as vegetarian powers. I've tried. I've been vegetarian for six years. Which is why I go back to my question, like, how long do you have to be vegan for? I've been vegetarian for six years. I've got no fucking powers. I've not even got like a spark of power lame. from being vegetarian. Might as well so eat a steak. It is pretty no. lame. <laughs> Give up. Well, I'm not going to go Hamburgers for everyone. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I, was, I did try vegan for maybe like, oh, I went to visit a friend who was vegan. So I had like vegan at her house and it was all right, actually. It was nice. Like, I can't say anything bad about the vegan food that I ate. But that was like for three days. And clearly three days isn't long enough to get the powers. Nah, and if it's someone... Why my question? Like, how long? Your friend might have been like a really good vegan cook. I'm a shit cook and I hate cooking and I'm really lazy and I like to just eat ready stuff and I just feel like there just would not be a lot of options for vegans. And I don't like mushrooms and there's all this other stuff and it just, it would be too hard. So no, I'm not doing it. You can't make me. Do we think Sam would live a completely... No. I can't even ask the question because no. it's too funny. <laughs> no. There's no way. No, There's no, absolutely no. no way that Sam would give up KFC. That's decided on both of our behalfs. Yeah, so that actually brings us down to our final question of the podcast. It is a, another Patreon question, and this one comes from Nicholas Haskins from the fabulous podcast, Nikolai's Kitchen, where he talks about all sorts of wonderful things to do with food and he is a very yummy, wonderful person himself. So thoroughly recommend him and his podcast. Yay. He would like to know, what type of meal is this movie? First of all, I love you, Nicholas Haskins. And he knows that I no, love him. I love him. Again. No, I love no, him. No, I do. do. Do we need to fight <laughs> for him? Because I will. I will fight over. for Nick. Yeah. Let's do it. He'd love it. We could oh oh we could we could make it a segment on live stream for the cure next year. Oh my god, that would be amazing. Yes, let's do that. Okay. We will fight. We will fight for your love, Nick. <laughs> don't don't think we won't, because we will. <laughs> we'll and it will it. be like a proper, proper scrap. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking about this, and my answer is gonna be a vegan chicken tikka masala. And let me explain. Because vegan, obviously, we have to keep it in. Uh, we have to keep it on the on the right lines for the vegan police. We don't want this podcast episode to get confiscated by the vegan police. So all of my food options, the vegan gummies were vegan, and this is vegan as well. And the reason why I've chosen it is because, like this movie, chicken tikka masala is is tasty. It's nutty. It's a little bit spicy, satisfying, and it's got a slight kick depending on how much chili is in that tikka masala. But ultimately, 
we're not using real chicken. We're using vegan chicken. And vegan chicken is actually like quite nice because I eat like chicken substitutes and they're really tasty. So, so yeah, it's a vegan chicken tikka masala and it's definitely vegan. So please don't come for me, vegan, please. And yeah, I thought that that summarized this movie really well. I think that is absolutely genius call. I'm going to go with deconstructed hot dogs with Mountain Dew flavored kombucha. Because (laughs) I feel like this movie, I said it before, I feel like it's just really riding on the wave of like hipster nerd culture. It was all like too cool for itself. Thought it was really clever. So that's why I'm going to go with deconstructed hot dogs with Mountain Dew flavored kombucha because kombucha is gross and people suck who drink it. So the end, full stop, and that's how I feel. Shut up. And on that delightful <laughs> note, um, that brings us to a close. We've done it. Oh, my God, this has been amazing without Sam. Hasn't it? I mean, I mean, this has been amazing. <laughs> I was just like, we did it without Sam. It was great. We should do it some more. Um, yeah. yeah, no, this is, this is good. For a movie that I didn't really like very much, it's been still a relatively enjoyable podcast, and for that, I thank you. Oh, well, you are so welcome. And, and apologies for not picking a, a better movie for you, Liz. Uh, one day we'll get to a movie that you can hyperbole sandwich and that I can hyperbole sandwich and we can hyperbole yeah, sandwich together. I, I just don't know that that's possible because you do have really terrible taste in movies, but that's okay. Excuse me, <laughs> girlfriend. Who's the one out of the two of us who has a movie podcast? It's me. It's not you. It's me. Well, okay. Would you like to just tell us about it then? I, I would. Thank you so much for asking, Liz. You're very kind. You're an amazing host. I know. This has been an incredible experience. I mean, it's definitely been a better experience than if Sam was here, let's be honest. Yeah. And I know that for a fact mm-hmm. because we've just kind of gelled. 100%. I think uh, I have kind of missed Sam a little bit, I guess, but I mean, not he's too much. okay. Yeah, he, he's all right, I guess. Y- if you squint, I do genuinely wish that you were here. Because it would have been really fun to talk about this movie with someone who likes it. Yes, yeah, <laughs> but otherwise, sauce, sauce, sauce. Um, no, no, no. You don't have to be sorry, Liz, because this has been this has been really super fun to do this with you. And yes, my podcast. Oh, let's let's just go into that. I do have a podcast. It's called Verbal Diorama, and it's basically uh, all about the history and legacy of movies you know and movies you don't. I go into film history. I do have an episode on Scott Pilgrim versus the world. It is a slightly older episode. So it came out in like 2019, I think. So if you're interested in the history of Scott Pilgrim and how it all came about, I promise I do remember Brian Lee O'Malley in that episode. I just didn't remember it today. <laughs> you know, it's been like three years since I did that episode. So yeah, um, one or two things have happened. Yeah, since it's been then. a long time. So, you know, don't, don't like shit on me too much. Yeah, so if you are interested in finding out general kind of film history about all sorts of really cool movies, then Verbal Diorama, you can find it wherever you found this podcast. And I am at Verbal Diorama on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. If you want to say hi and talk to me about Scott Pilgrim, then feel free. And this has been amazing. Yes, it has. We've had a great time, but now we must depart. I... Know that we have um, a couple other episodes coming up, but I don't know who with or what they are other than I'm pretty sure we have <laughs> Thor, but that might come out before this one. I'm a really good host that knows a lot about stuff. So basically, it's just going to be all a great surprise when um, you see the next episodes pop up. But you should probably listen to them anyway. I still think they're going to be good. If you do want to know more about our podcast, Movie Reviews and 20 Qs, you can find us on Twitter as Movie Reviews In. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook. And we um, you know, have our episodes on all the places that podcasts can usually be found. We're pretty awesome. And now we must say sayonara, as the Katanayagi twins would probably say if they'd had any lines in this movie. Or continue. Floor. Nine, <laughs> eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. This episode has been a flawless victory. I have no idea what you're talking about. And I'm just like doing that, you know, awkward laughter where you're like, ha, 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 She's so ha, funny. Yeah, it's really funny. Ha, ha. Yeah, good um, one. Anyway. Someone make me a bacon and egg buddy, please. Kai, Katana, what's those twins called? I love you so much, Liz.